Hey, what's up everyone? It's Michael with Color Cubic, and I'm back again with another Cinema 4D tutorial. So in this tutorial, what we're gonna be doing is we're going to create a basketball in Cinema 4D. We're gonna do things a little differently in this tutorial. First and foremost, it is going to be a two-part video. Hold up, wait a minute. And it will involve uh, Adobe Illustrator. So uh, if you don't have Adobe Illustrator, that's okay. I will make the Alpha Map channel available for download if you don't have Adobe Illustrator. If you do have Adobe Illustrator, uh, you can follow along and I would recommend you do because that's a good practice. With that said, let's go ahead and jump right into this. Now I'm in Cinema 4D R19 and right away I'm gonna come over here to my primitive tab and click and hold this with my mouse and come over here to sphere and select sphere. And so we have a sphere on the scene. Next, I'm going to come over here to display and I wanna select garage shading lines. Before we do anything else though, I do want to select the live selection tool. Uh, just as a quick note, I prefer uh, the live selection tool selected as opposed to the move tool. I only utilize the move tool if I need to adjust anchor points uh, with uh, any kind of splines that I have selected, but we're not going to be working with splines, at least not in that in that way in this tutorial. So uh, the live selection tool will work just great. So now that that's done, uh, let's come back over here to our objects tab with our primitive sphere selected. And with that sphere selected, let's come down here to the attributes tab. And with the attributes tab, make sure that the object tab of our primitive sphere is selected and let's go ahead and change the segments from 24 segments to 200 segments. So you can see we got a lot of segments here and that's exactly what we want, that's okay. Next, let's go ahead and change the type from standard to icosahedron. Now I'm gonna zoom in here real quick so you can see what's happening. What we have here is an array of triangle polygons. Now this isn't editable yet, the sphere isn't editable yet, but we will make it editable. Now we wanna take these triangle segments and we wanna convert them to hexagon shapes. So uh, there's a little process to do that. Uh, it's pretty quick. So, uh, so now that we've changed the type to icosahedron, icosahedron, it's kind of a tongue twister, let's come back up to the ob objects tab and with our primitive sphere selected, hold down the command key if you're on a Mac, the control key if you're on a PC, and with those keys held down, click and drag with your mouse and just drag up so you can duplicate this primitive sphere. Now, with our original sphere selected, let's go ahead and double click both of these two radio buttons. So they're both red, and that will take our original sphere off the scene so we just have our duplicate sphere on the scene. Now, with our duplicate sphere selected, go ahead and press the C key on your keyboard. And that will convert our primitive uh, sphere to an editable sphere. So now it's an editable object on our scene. At this point, I think it's a good idea just to save uh, the scene file, just so you don't lose your place. That's not a whole lot of steps, but it's just good practice. Save your scene files. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and assume you've already saved your scene. With our editable sphere selected, let's come over here to our edge selection tab. And if you're on a Mac, go ahead and press the command A key. If you're on a PC, the control A key, and that will select all the edge or line segments of the sphere. Now let's come up here to mesh, commands, and let's come down here to subdivide and let's click this little cog gear and that will bring up the subdivide menu. Now right away, we want the subdivision to be one. Let's go ahead and check smooth subdivision and maximum angle, let's keep that at 180 degrees and just click okay. Now I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit closer. You can see what's happening. You can see these hexagonal shapes that appeared. Now that's exactly what we want. Now the next step is we need to get rid of this triangle polygon uh, edge array that's making up our, uh, our, our editable sphere. So the next step is what we wanna do is hover over our point selection tab. Now before you select this, 
If you're on a Mac, hold down the command key. If you're on a PC, hold down the control key. And with those keys held down, press the point selection tab. And what it'll do is it'll highlight and select all of the points of the triangle polygons that we have selected in our edge selection tab. So now that we've done that, let's go back to our edge selection tab. And with our, uh, with our edge selection tab, let's right click on our object and let's come down to melt and select melt. So depending on uh, you know, what your processing power is like, uh, it may take a little minute to do this. So with that said, uh, you can see the results we got. Now we have a mesh of uh, hexagon polygons that are making up our sphere instead of uh, triangle polygons. But there's still a problem. And let's go back to our point selection tab. You can see that those uh, points that made up our triangle mesh are still selected. But because they've been selected and retained, that selection is retained, we can just delete these off the scene. So let's go ahead and just press delete. And there we go, cleaned up. So now our sphere is made up just of a mesh of uh, hexagonal polygons, which is precisely what we want. So the next step is we want to come to our surface polygons tab. And with that selected, let's go ahead and press the command A if you're on a Mac, control A if you're on a PC, and we'll select all of the uh, edges or all of the surfaces of our hexagon mesh that make up our editable sphere. So with that selected, let's go ahead and right click and let's come down to extrude inner. Now in the attributes tab of the extrude inner tool, there's a few things we want to change if they're not already uh, set up like uh, it is for me. First and foremost, uh, we want the maximum angle to be 89 degrees. The offset, we want that to be uh, 0.5 centimeters. And we want to uncheck preserve group. And then let's go ahead and press apply. So I'm going to zoom in here real quick and you can see we're getting some nice gutters, which is precisely what we want. Now that we've applied an extrude inner to the surface, let's go ahead and right click again and let's come to extrude. And we want to change maximum angle to 89 degrees. We want to change the offset to again 0.5. Oops and everything else is fine so let's go ahead and press apply now depending on what your processor is like you may breeze through this next step super quick if you don't have a fast processor don't worry about it it'll take a little bit for this to work and that's okay so uh, while this is processing i'm going to go ahead and pause the video and then i'll come back once it's done so i'll be right back All right, so we are done. And as you can see, it's extruded all of those hexagon selections, and that's exactly what we want. So the next step is uh, let's come back over here to our live selection tool, and we can just deselect off the screen so those are no longer selected. It's exactly what we want. Perfect. Now, what we want to do is we want to deselect our editable sphere in our objects tab. And we want to come over here to our uh, subdivision surfaces. Now, um, normally I would recommend select the editable sphere and hold down the Alt Option key on your keyboard and select subdivision surface. However, we need to make some adjustments to the subdivision surface. So just select that first. And then once we've made the adjustments, we can nest our editable sphere in our subdivision surface hypernerp. So real quick, with the subdivision surface selected, in the attributes tab with the object tab of our subdivision surface selected let's come down to type and change catmull clark end gons to just catmull clark next we want to change the subdivision editor from two to one and finally we want to change subdivision renderer from three to one now that that's done let's come back to our objects tab up here and let's take our editable sphere and place this so just drag and drop 
and place that in the subdivision surfaces. And now let's come back over here to display and change it from garage shading lines to just garage shading. And you can see we've got this nice bump to our surface of our sphere. So I feel like this is a really good place to stop. And um, you know, the next the next thing I want to do in the next video is we're going to create the uh, the line segments that make up a basketball. So uh, we'll do that by going into Adobe Illustrator. Now, for those of you who don't have Adobe Illustrator, that's okay. I'll make the uh, the scene file available to you so you can access the Adobe Illustrator uh, line graphic. For those of you that do have Adobe Illustrator, I would encourage you to follow along just so you can get used to the practice of doing this. Uh, it, you know, there's, there's a lot of instances with 3D modeling, especially in Cinema 4D, where you can utilize Photoshop and Illustrator to help create unique shapes and unique elements and uh, essentially get Cinema 4D to do things that you normally wouldn't be able to do on, on your own, uh, just within Cinema 4D. Uh, with that said, if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And also be sure to follow uh, Color Cubic on Instagram if you're not already doing so. Um, I'd recommend you do that because we're about to roll out a uh, our own preset plugin, an HDRI lighting preset plugin for Cinema 4D. Uh, I've been working on this for about a year and a half now, and I spent the earlier part of this year uh, porting it over to Cinema 4D R20, so it's ready for Cinema 4D R20. And um, you know, it's pretty affordable. You can see what uh, renders we've, we've achieved with it. And uh, I plan on rolling out a bunch of tutorials uh, to kind of highlight its features. You know, it, it's interesting because I've, I've, I've got a lot of comments of people asking how I achieve the renders I do and the thumbnails of these videos. And I exclusively use uh, our preset plugin, our HDRI lighting preset plugin, Scene Light. So if you want to see the results, you can check it out on the Color Cubic Instagram account. And uh, again, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can get a notification of when those tutorials drop and of course when the product is officially released. With that said, uh, thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.